CCTR, the bright side of Staffordshire. Thanks today to Sir Nicholas Serato, who's recently been appointed the chair of the Arts Council England, is joining me today. Nick, we met recently during your visit to the area at the New Victoria Theatre. Have you visited the area previously? I've not been in Stoke and the area much in the last 10 or 15 years, but at one time I used to come from time to time, and obviously what I've seen is a big transformation in the six towns. Obviously economic changes, but now social changes, and I think also the beginning of some artistic changes. You were there to review the Appetite organisation, really, and the, the work they've been doing over the last three or four years. What were your thoughts on the day? I think I was enormously impressed by the way in which people had come together to create Appetite in the first place, and the initiative that, for instance, the new Vic had taken in recognising that although it was a theatre that was serving the community all, all kinds of ways, there was very much more that could be done for Stoke than the new Vic could do on its own. And so creating Appetite with a number of partners seemed to be a very interesting way forward. Yeah, and and you see, oh, I sorry. think over, over the last three or four years they've achieved a great deal. Yes, they have done some really good work in terms of laying a foundation there for, for future events in the city. I think that what they've managed to do is to draw together you know, the, the ceramics biennial, um, the universities, Mitchell Art Centre, the Potteries Museum, um, Airspace Gallery, and start to create, if you like, a kind of critical mass of organisations that want to work with and through the arts for the benefit of the community as a whole. Yes, they've also attracted artists to the area, haven't they? I mean, there's other smaller groups that are forming. There's a place called Pilgrim's Pit in Stoke. Lots of different artist collections that sort of see the place as an inspirational place to work. I think what they've begun to do is probably two things. One is to bring some really high-quality performers and artists to Stoke from elsewhere in the country. And secondly, to start creating within Stoke the possibility of artists establishing themselves in studio spaces, beginning to contribute to the economy, beginning to make centres where people will want to think about living and working and serving the communities that already lives and works there. Yes, certainly. What did you see that you thought was worth a recommendation? Would would you recommend that people did something similar to yourself and and popped up to Stoke for the weekend? I think I would, obviously, there are some world-class facilities in Stoke already, including the museum, the theatre. Um, It's really fascinating to see what's beginning to happen in terms of the rejuvenation of the town centre, um, the work that's been done in terms of repaving streets, beginning to open up shops, beginning to bring economic life back to the centre has, has been really important in Hanley and I think that will have a benefit for all the six towns. I know you've been away recently so you may have missed this. There was a recent parliamentary discussion about the, the area. I don't, I don't know if you caught that. It was very complimentary about the area. Um, unfortunately I have been away. I was travelling um, for the last week or so in Hong Kong and elsewhere so I haven't caught that. But what's striking to me is the way in which the universities, both universities that are contributing to the town, not looking in, but actually being part of the wider community. I know Staffordshire University very well and the way it's opened in terms of, it's made it more an open area where the public can just walk through and that sort of thing, you know, feel part of the university. It's not one of these places you you feel afraid of going into anymore. Well, I think the university has recognised, Staffordshire particularly, but also I think Keel, that they need and they will flourish if they are part of that wider community and it's good to see the way in which you know, starting with Appetite, organisations in the community have come together and are making this bid for Stoke to be City of Culture in 2021. I think that if you had said five years ago that Stoke would be bidding to be City of Culture for the UK, people would have said look, it must be somewhere else you're talking about rather than Stoke, but I think it's really remarkable that people have come together in this way. Um, I guess you can't really commit in terms of impartiality in that, but from what you saw that weekend, did you see 
do you think that Stoke's got as good a chance as anybody else? I think Stoke is going to make a really strong bid from what I saw. Um, the competition's considerable, um, but when we get to the next stage is obviously the shortlist. I'd love to see Stoke on the shortlist, and I think it would reflect... Um, I don't want to... I'm not part of the judging panel, obviously, but I yeah. think that people are bound to be impressed by what's been achieved in a relatively short period of time. And, you know, it's another four years to 2021. I think Stoke could do a great deal more in the next four years to really... And then build on, on, on if they were to be successful, and build from there on. Yeah, I think it's it's partially rebuilding as well. And I mean, there's a, there's a momentum there, and you see the, the work that's going on down at the Spode site that was a former factory producing high quality tableware and uh, china you see them sort of places being revitalized and be a great opportunity for the city if that were to happen i mean we've seen you know stoke is really well placed geographically and it's been very successful in the past it's interesting that i spent a bit of time in cornwall and st austell and stoke are beginning to explore possibilities of re-establishing the connection between what was obviously the source of China clay yes, yeah. and thinking about the ceramics industry and the, you know, the, the production of ceramics and thinking about new ways of, of harnessing those traditions. I mean, there were great skills in Stoke and they haven't all disappeared. Far from it. There's quite a few smaller potteries as well as the more well-established ones like Emma Bridgewater, Steelite and Dudson that... Are, exactly. are taking shape. Yes. Just a little bit about you, Nick, because I I'm, I'm don't think you're that well known in the area. I know your background. You've been fundamental in the in the changes at the Tate or the Tate Britain, as it's now known. So I've been involved with the Tate for since the late eighties, and during that time, we've built Tate Modern. Uh, we've rededicated the original building that was the Tate Gallery to now focus on British art of all periods from 1500 to the present day. It's called Tate Britain. We've opened Tate and Dives, and we've done a great deal of work around the country, taking what is a national collection to places that wouldn't normally expect perhaps to have work of that quality and building audiences across the country. And it is a great national collection. It's owned by everyone across the country, not just by those people who live in London or can visit London. And we felt a strong sense that we ought to be working with Newcastle or Manchester or Plymouth in making sure that people really can enjoy these great works of art. Any approaches from Stoke, by the way, in terms of um, being able to display some of the art? I think we're bound to see more approaches of that kind, especially after this interview. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> so just in terms of the Tate, I, I, yeah, that's become one of the most visited attractions in London now, isn't it? Well, we now get something like six million visitors a year coming to Tate Modern. We get about a million and a half going to Tate Britain. Um, those are both the record figures. We're up there alongside the British Museum or the National Gallery. Uh, with Tate Modern, we get twice as many visitors as the Museum of Modern Art in New York or the Pompidou Centre in Paris. So these are big visitor attractions. But as I say, they serve the whole country as well as serving London. Yes, of course there's Tate Liverpool as well, which I, I do visit on occasion. Well, Tate Liverpool is an astonishing success because there are something like 600,000 visitors a year, which is one of the most visited museums anywhere in the country. Um, it works with a whole range of hospitals and schools across Merseyside, and it's changed the lives of, well, now effectively two two generations of young people in particular. That's the kind of impact that an institution like Tate Liverpool can have on a community. Yeah, people don't realise it's not just a gallery. Um, I think it's it's a gallery, but it also has a plays a part in schools. And you see the same thing in the way in which the new Vic works. Um, in North Staffordshire, working with schools, working out in the community these organizations don't peter cheeseman who founded the new vic what in the 1960s yeah always had a belief that 
theatre ought to be not just confined to um, the building itself, but should uh, work with the local community. And I think the strength of the new Vic in recent years is that it has, in a way, renewed that commitment to working with people in North Staffordshire. Yes, certainly. And Appetite also delivers that as part of its remit, and they have something called Roundabout, which is a pop-up theatre that is in the city centre for a week and has various acts, theatre, shows on, and things like that, which is also a great success. I mean, I think the way that Appetite has um, sort of galvanised audiences and also drawn in people who don't naturally think of themselves as an audience for the arts. I mean, people, I think, discover things about themselves through working with Appetite. They find a place in the community. One of the things that impressed me most about Appetite was the way in which they set up these so-called supper clubs in which they bring people together to talk about the kinds of art experiences that they would like Appetite to bring to Stoke. And that really involves large numbers of volunteers. It involves people, as I say, who haven't previously been engaged or thought about the arts as applying to them or feeding their lives. And that's a really, they've done it with incredible success. And they've built, a na- frankly, they've built a national reputation for themselves as one of the pioneers of this kind of work. And for that to be happening in North Staffordshire is, it sh- should be a matter of pride for the community. I think you probably answered the next question was, why do you think a, a programme like Appetite is important to Stoke? The great thing about Appetite is it, it takes... It brings together a combination of enthusiasm and interest with a professionalism and bringing some of the best arts to 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 the six towns and as I say you know some great companies have visited um, Stoke as a result of appetite engagement um, people themselves who've never thought of being involved in the arts have become involved the festivals and events that have taken place in the summer in parks has given opportunities to young people and to other people who've never thought of themselves as art lovers, suddenly rec- recognising that there's something in this or the Christmas festival, for instance. I think, you know, when they put on the Christmas lights in Hanley and have an arts event as well as turning on lights on a Christmas tree, people realise that the arts have something to bring to their lives that they perhaps hadn't expected. Yeah, something else to offer. Okay, moving on. And I think to... it's I think it's remar- I think it's remarkable the way the local authorities have responded and have really worked to support um, appetite um, and increasingly see the arts as playing a part in the lives of everyone in the community. Yes, yeah, certainly, I, I do agree with that. Good to see, and long may, may that continue. Yes. Arts Council, then you you you've recently become the chair of Arts at Council England. That is very recently. Was that one of your first visits you've done as chair? Um, I wanted to get out out of London. I wanted to go and see a project or series of projects in a part of the country that hasn't traditionally been had much involvement with the Arts Council and see what we could achieve because in the longer term the Arts Council is using lottery money, it's using some money from government, it's working with local authorities to help enhance the lives of people across the country and there are obviously places where we've traditionally put money not only in London but in Manchester and Leeds and Sheffield and um, Birmingham for instance but we should be thinking about those communities that aren't in those big metropolitan conurbations. Yeah, do you see that as a, a two-way street? Is Stoke-on-Trent still a, a cold spot for the Arts Council then? Uh, I think that Stoke-on-Trent is making itself a hot spot. Yes. I think the activity... It, you know, success breeds success. Uh, it breeds confidence. It breeds, breeds belief. And I think the investment the Arts Council's already made is bound to lead to further requests for funding, and I hope the Arts Council might be able to respond, and I hope the local authorities will find ways of using monies that are available to them, even in circumstances where we know local authority funding is under pressure. I hope they'll recognise the value of investing in 
arts activities for the community as a whole. And I think Appetite has, has demonstrated what relatively small sums of money can do um, for a community. As chair of the Arts Council, how do you keep across art and its many forms? I do, and I will be spending more and more time um, looking across the art forms. I mean, one of the great attractions for me of leaving the Tate, which is obviously principally concerned with the visual arts, occasionally a bit of performance, is the fact that I will become more and more engaged in theatre, in arts in the community, in festivals, in music, and for me that's a, you know, there'll be a sense of personal discovery about that, but I think and hope that some of the lessons I've learned of the Tate I will be able to bring to the benefit of the arts as a whole. And and what difference do you see yourself making a difference to the Arts Council in terms of the direction you want to take it in? Well, everyone will judge me in part on whether I'm able to get more money out of central government. Yes. Um, In the current circumstances, that's going to be really tough. (laughs) Yeah. So I think my task, in a way, is to work with colleagues here and try and make the very best use of the money that we already have um, to try and direct it to places where it can bring great benefit um, and to try and perhaps open up new sources of funds um, to try and make sure that people recognise that the arts can do all kinds of things for communities, you know, beyond the arts having an intrinsic value they help communities in terms of we've seen many examples of the arts playing a part in the regeneration of communities both physical and um, social and in a way regeneration in terms of confidence so I think the arts can play a part and I think there's a strong case for investment in the arts and I will obviously try and make that case. Uh, Interesting you should say that you know new sources of of money Uh, I know that was a, a big area of success for you during your time at the Tate. Well, at the Tate, I was very fortunate in being able to persuade people to give some money who hadn't previously been recognised themselves as donors. We built up a big membership. You know, we pushed the membership. We have pushed the membership of the Tate from you know five or six thousand fifteen years ago to well over one hundred and twenty thousand now. That's still a small number in comparison with the number of visitors to the Tate, but it represents serious income for the Tate. And it represents a constituency of support. And I'm not saying you'd be able to do anything on quite that scale uh, across the country, but I think people's engagement, as I saw when I was in Stoke, people's engagement in the new Vic, people's engagement with Appetite, working with the ceramics biennial, um, it's that kind of personal involvement that really makes a difference in a community. Well, I put a message on, on Facebook that I was about to interview you and ask a few people just to have they get any questions for you so I hope you don't mind answering a few of those if that's okay for a few questions okay. and I will be happy to answer okay Alan Gerard asked how should Stoke-on-Trent use art to improve outsiders and its own citizens perceptions of the city I think Stoke is already doing that in inviting artists to work on regeneration schemes when you see as I was saying earlier, the, you know, the centre of Handley being repaved, poets and writers have been involved in that process. Um, and I think, I'm not saying that every corner should have a sculpture on it. I wouldn't be, it's not as simple as that. Mm-hmm. But I think artists do have a part to play. We also need to recognise artists have a part to play in schools, for instance. They have a part to play in the community more widely than simply being in their studios. And just their presence in a town makes a difference. Certainly. Sandra Barb has asked, from an Arts Council point of view, what is art? I think art takes many, many different forms. There was a time when the Arts Council regarded art as um, perhaps just of a very rarefied kind, what you might find on a stage at the Royal Opera House or on the floor of the National Gallery or a gallery at the National Gallery, but I think now we all recognise that art can take many, many different forms, and we can go from theatre in the streets to theatre at the New Vic to people themselves making painting or sculpture or making films or taking photographs, and the Arts Council is involved in all of that activity. 
there used to be a very, very sharp distinction between the professional and the amateur, and I think we recognise now that that distinction, while the Arts Council primarily is supporting the professional, it also put, supports training for young people, opening doors for young people, and thinking about the arts as playing a part in all our lives. In terms of the Arts Council, how, how does that work with organisations? A question I've been asked to ask is, is it right that certain organisations cream off all the funding and community groups miss out simply because they can't afford a professional bid writer? I think that um, the Arts Council has become much better at helping organisations put together bids um, I think when you look at the range of organisations that are now funded by the Arts Council, if you look at, for instance, we're currently going through a round of applications for funding for the next four years, and the Arts Council currently funds about 600 organisations mm -hmm. on a regular basis. We've had applications from over 1,000, about 1,166 to be precise. Um, many of those applications have been presented in what I'm told is a really professional way. I'm sure we're going to end up funding more organisations over the next four years than we did in the previous four years, even though our funding is not hugely increased. And many of those will be small community organisations. And that 1100... I think we're, 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 I think we're better at doing it. Are we as good as we could be? Of course not. Yeah, OK. Chris Nash asks, do you support the idea of Stoke-on-Trent becoming a cultural capital? And what do you think of the strong, strong arguments for Stoke being nominated and winning? Potting, heritage, music, countryside? I think you've partially answered that already, but... I think that, you know, Stoke has some really powerful arguments um, to bring to bear on being cultural capital. This is both... Or, City of Culture. This is this is this is partly to do with achievement already on the ground, but it's also about potential. I think we've seen with events like the Big Feast that Stoke can really embrace the arts, and it can be a feature of life in in, in the city. And so, as a result, I think they've got a very very strong case. Okay, Nick. Um... Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. I really appreciate you taking the time to have a catch-up. Anything you want to add? I think I'm looking forward to coming back. And I know that when I do, even if it's quite soon, I'm going to see transformation already taking place compared with what I saw a couple of weeks ago. Because the commitment of the universities, the commitment of the partners around um, Appetite, uh, the engagement of the new Vic is is changing the city and it may not be evident to everyone on a day-to-day -day basis but if you look over a few months I think you'll see the changes and I really wish Stoke every success in their bid to get onto the shortlist for City of Culture and I hope they they make the shortlist and then move on from there. Nick thank you very much for your time and no doubt that we will be asking soon for the take to get some heart up to Stoke on Trent uh, of world class quality as a result of this interview as you said so we won't let you down on that front Rob thank you very much indeed for your interest and I shall pass on that desire to my colleagues at the Tate and we'll look forward to getting an application thank you for your time thank you very much thanks for your time today thank Cheers, you Nick, Nick bye thanks, bye. yeah thanks again for that mate much appreciated I enjoyed talking with you and I think what Six Towns does is pretty remarkable what I should say is, is that I think you as a station as a radio station have played a big part in the success of Appetite frankly they all, they recognise it because you've actually in some sense provided the glue between the various elements of what Appetite is doing and by reporting as you have as regularly as you have you've encouraged people to recognise there's something new in Stoke that they can be part of yeah, certainly. I think we've led the way on that on that front. I'm sure. Expect to. I think you should. Go on. I hope you were recording that little bit too, so you can use that. Okay, thank you. I haven't switched it off yet, so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good. we've got okay, that. Use that bit too. Yeah, right? we'll, I we'll really do. mean it. Yeah, thank you very much, Nick. Very and good. Expect an application Rob, for the soon. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, speak thank soon you. and see you bye soon. Bye. bye.